Wood burning stove vent pipe install. On this episode of Roofing DIY, we're going to take over from here where the homeowner left off and shoot it the rest of the way through the roof. So quick disclaimer, the homeowner did all this install up until this point. He took uh, time to look up the code regulation and clearances from combustibles. He's not sure how to do the roof side, so that's what we're here going to do. We're going to start by getting a line shot up, mark the center or close to the center, drive a nail through so I can locate it up on the roof side, flat bar it out, cut a hole, run the pipe through, put the vent pipe flashing in, the collar, the pipe, the straps, the cap, everything we need to do up there. If you like this kind of content, give it a thumbs up on the way in. If you make it to the end and you like it, consider subscribing so you're notified on the next one. Disclaimer, if you're up on your own roof and you're putting your own life in harm's way potentially, I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying you can do it. So look up the right safety equipment. Enough said, I ain't your mom, so let's get into the video. So there's several methods you could use to mark where you need to get through the roof up here. You can take a plumb bob and put it up on your roof deck up here, kind of move it around until your plumb bob's down the center and drive your nail through that location. Looks like he's got a laser from when he was straightening this up and shooting a laser up to find out if he can get the clearance. So I believe he said it was a two inch clearance from the combustible. So we'll need to get our edge out to here, kind of centered between this chase. However you want to do it, you just want your pipe to be finished through the roof pretty straight. You don't want to look out on your roof and see it crooked one way or another. <clears throat> So we're going to see if this will turn on, see if we can see. Almost out of reach. <clears throat> so the pipe coming up right here in the center of the pipe, center-ish, it's coming through, shooting the laser there. I just tried to aim in between the two trusses here. We're going to remove the shingles in that section and then plunge cut where the saw's on here, open it up until we go from truss to truss and about the right distance through there. The If it lower the slope it is, it'll almost be circle. The steeper it is, the more of an oval shape you're going to have to make for the pipe clearance to make it through there. Kind of hard to describe, but you'll see maybe this is probably about an 8-12 pitch. Not, not crazy, but... Uh, I will say if you're a little skittish of heights and you've not been on roofing, this might be a little steep. So again, safety equipment. Let's get shut this off here. So right here we got the nail coming through. Use the good old pitch hopper to get me up safely onto this. I think I was wrong about an eight, it might be a 10. No, I was right, it's, oh, it's a nine. Anyway, so this should be right above the pipe on this plane, should be close this way, it means the trusses are going to be about like that. So we're going to remove, we're going to flat bar these couple loose and get uh, these three out just to see what we're dealing with here. Drive this down so I don't get my hand on it. A little bitty notch right here. And let's get started. It's a fairly wide diameter, large diameter vent going in. And that means the flange for it's gonna be rather large too. So make sure you flat bar enough loose that you can get it in there okay. But 
Oh, that's right here. There's a bunch of nails on the side. This nail should be over here. It's only a four nail pattern. I believe this roof is fairly new. Yeah, you can get away with four. Manufacturers say, okay, but let's be honest. Let's be real. A box of nails is cheap, cheap insurance. Let's just use a couple extra nails, but properly space them. And that's not right. Oh, there, I'm sorry, there's one I missed. One, two, three, four, five, five nail. I like to use six. He has new shingles, so we're probably gonna use the new shingles. <clears throat> if you're careful and you don't damage these, you're probably okay to reuse them. But if you got new ones with good seal strips, just use the new ones. We're getting ready to actually cut the hole now. <clears throat> Get it opened up. We'll see exactly for sure where it's at here. There's my pipe. So now from here, you can kind of feel where your trusses are. You also want to make sure your clearance from your combustibles is including your deck. You don't want the decking touching the pipe because the pipe will get hot. Even though it is a triple wall, it's still going to radiate pretty good heat. The flange is rather massive, so don't be afraid. You know, again, you don't want it touching where it's gonna get hot. Now, because the roof pitch, you got a round pipe coming through and the roof pitch is steeper, you're gonna have to cut lower and higher on your decking for that to fit through. That's kind of what I was trying to describe earlier. So we're gonna come up higher, down a little lower here. So we'll get a section of pipe ready to go and see how it fits through here. See if we need to go up higher or lower or possibly a little more over here. Because if you want a clearance of about two inches, I need to trim a little more right here. All right, let's go get uh, back into the attic and shove that pipe through and connect it. It's long, actually, I think that next section of pipe will put me about right here. He had it figured so a joint will be right in the attic and then we'll come through the roof. So part of the reason this plastic bag was put over this was not just for me cutting this. He actually installed this a while back and did not want the hot air flowing down into uh, the house or the cold air rising up through, transferring, just wasting heat. So he put that just to kind of keep the flow down. It worked good and kept the dust from going into it, but it's a wood burning stove so it's not going to hurt it. Okay, we got the next section of pipe. We've got the joint, so it'll be just below the roof deck, and that way you can keep one of the connections out of the weather. We'll shoot the next two up to the proper height. There's different brands on the market. This one here simply drops down and clicks into these little uh, slits. There's little fins, and it will kind of twist and lock under those, almost like a thread. Might have to kind of tweak this, because I noticed there's a flat spot to it, but we will see if it'll go down gently. It's probably still catching the inside. Yeah, it should have gone down. Let's pull that off real quick. Yeah, there's a little bit of a flat spot right there. But you can see right here, these slits up. They should catch and go under and guide in and pull down. Yeah, it's kind of got a bit of a flat spot right here. It's more so right there on the inner tube. This is a triple wall, so you got the outer one in between these here. Let's see if it'll go. 
I might need to just kind of push down just a little bit, but I don't want to push through your ceiling. There, start. there you go. And there it is. Yep. Hopefully the camera was on there for you guys. So I need to go a little bit lower on this roof side, possibly a little bit higher, because as I said, the steeper the pitch of the roof, the more of an egg shape it's got to be. And you want to have clearances not only from your trusses and rafters, but also your decking. So we're going to need to go a little bit lower, yep. possibly a little bit higher. I'll carry the next section of pipe up it's to gonna find sit out. Nice. Yeah, we'll cut this side here. I believe it was two inches off of the, uh, the truss here, so we're good right there. Yep. So I'll go grab the other pipe on the way up, and I will be right back up on the roof side. Let's go get the uh, pipe brought up just to get an idea of all of our clearances. We'll set the pipe down, put the flange on, pipe through, connect it, secure everything, start shingling it back. Yeah, I'd say we got plenty of clearance now. Okay, so you can't be over that then. Oh, I can. You can be over. Oh, okay. That's the minimum. They want to get you off. Oh, okay, gotcha. So you, you're you not going to be too high with that. You're going to be sufficiently high enough. I'll, I'll be probably higher than I need to be. But not, not a problem, though. I like that. Okay. Yeah, I think we're good to go ahead and get this connected then. There, they connected. So this homeowner has got a bracket that will actually help secure the pipe. So it's got its clearances and secure it to the roof deck. That way it's not shifting or blowing around. It's nice and solid. You're not relying on just this to hold it. Figured if I say don't drop it, I'd drop it. That's good. So these will move to the angle of the roof. You'll be able to center your pipe so you've got the clearances everywhere, so it's straight the way it needs to be. And we're gonna screw these screws down into the trusses. So it's secure, then we'll tighten everything around and it holds the pipe nice and solid. Slip the flange down over it and start putting the shingle back process. After that, it would be the last section of pipe, which he thinks he got too long, and the cap uh, and a couple of supports. So at a later point when he orders the shorter section, we'll just twist that top off, switch the vent cap, screw the new pipe down on, good to go. Let's make sure we're clear around everywhere, it's good. Make sure it's pretty vertical. Okay. That's barely at the tick mark there. Is that getting too close to that truss? No, I think you're good. You want to go with that? Yeah, I think that's that's two inches. Uh, yeah, that, you'll be fine. It, I mean, it looked good from below. Anyway. Okay, it's better than what it was. Good. You want this back through there? Got it. Got it.
<clears throat> All right, putting the roof flashing on, you wanna make sure your shingles are under far enough so if you ever did get anything coming off of your flange, you've got a shingle up high enough. You could tuck it under one more, under this one, but if you do, that shingle underneath is only gonna be this high. So me personally, I think this is how I want. I would rather see flashing showing and knowing that it's good. There's people on the channel that comment, oh, I'm doing it wrong. I can tell you there's many leaks I've seen because they didn't run enough shingles under and the water comes off and trickles laterally off to the side. And uh, I'm not gonna pull this up to show you, but the shingle under it's typically goes, the headlap is up about that high. So imagine this not being here. Anything flipping off is now onto your roof deck and going in, so that's not good. You can use your own judgment. The concept is you want the water to get off of your roof, onto the flange, off the flange, onto the roof. So I wanna go on top of this one. These will cover over the top. So the pipe is secured by the bracket underneath. Get this straightened up, ready to go. I'm gonna go get my sealer, put a thin bead of sealer under this and some people say, oh, you don't want to do that. You don't want to nail down below, but you don't want it flopping loose. You want it secured. Pretty good. Because this keyway is so close to the flange, I'm gonna actually flat bar that back and cut it back a little bit and put tabs in so you don't have a keyway right near the edge of that. If you have ice and water, you can ice and water under it. You can ice and water on top of this under here and extend this even more. I don't have any with me today, so it can still be done fine without. So let's go grab the uh, caulking, get the uh, new shingles up here, and we will be right back. Sorry for the interruption. I wish I didn't have to do this, but I got no other options. I don't know what else to do. I'm at my office on this beautiful rain day, putting together this video, heavily requested. A lot of you commented about it, trying to do it. A few hours into it, in my office editing it. And I get to that last video clip you just saw, shut the camera off, went down, got some things, talked to the homeowner a little bit, got sidetracked, got back up, got started to record, finished my day out. That was Friday, I'm editing it now, Tuesday. There's absolutely no audio in the rest of the video. Every clip, there's been camera turn on, turn off. There's no audio, I don't know what happened. I was using no external mic, there's no adapters. I don't know why it happened, but it happened. Every now and then I'll have corrupt footage, stabilization turned off, just random things happen and it's, it's junk after scrubbing through it. But I've got several hours into this. I'm gonna do my best. If you're a YouTuber or a content creator out there, let me know, a video editor, if you got any ideas, tricks, let me know. But my thought is, I'm on my way home to have lunch. I'm going to watch the video back, maybe fast forward a little bit through it and narrate over. That's the only thing I can think of. I'm sorry it happened. I'm pissed it happened. I just want to salvage it for you guys. Just give it a thumbs up. Hopefully you like the rest of the video. I'm gonna to try to get this done yet today. Head to my sister's to upload on their fiber optics. So you can watch this yet tonight. I hope. Give it a thumbs up. Hope you like the rest of the video. Okay, so what I'm doing now is flat bar on this tab back because that keyway that is right over the flange, never good to have that. If you have that break somewhere in something, I recommend removing it. Flat bar it back further, make sure your keyways and your nails are all staggered enough and just remove it, cut it back, fill it in. Looking at the flange, I believe, yeah, go ahead and put some sealer down the side. I don't go all the way across the bottom because I don't want to trap any potential moisture under there, but just to help seal it down the sides. Then I secure mine by shooting them. You can use screws if you want to. It's not, not quite necessary. Screws or uh, nails are fine. Make sure you seal them when you're done. So get the coil put back in. There we go. We're starting to shoot it off. You don't want to shoot your nails near the crimp seam. You also want to leave a channel for water around. I'll show you more on that later. Uh, here, I actually look at this. The cellophane strip is stuck to the sealer. This is not good. I actually did a video the other day down below down there, a uh, live video. I'll plug a card of it up above. But the cellophane is not supposed to stick to the seal. It's supposed to stick right there and pointing to. That way, when it's packaged in the, sh the shipping and storage warehouses, they don't stick together. I've had people comment before, see if it's like that, it won't seal down. They've commented before, oh, they never pulled it off. Well, 
The only time you need to pull it off is if it doesn't stick to the correct side right there, like it's supposed to. Then yes, you need to, or they'll never never seal down. So we're going to put that shingle in. We're going to mark it and cut it just a little short. So when it's in there, there's a little channel next to that flange for the water to run out. Trim it up just a little bit. I hope this narration works. We're just going to go with it. I can't remember everything I said for word for word. So go ahead and get that shot in. Watching your nail placement. Make sure everything's good. Side note, the shingles are of the same exact bundle of install. It's just been a few years there in the guy's barn. You can see a slight difference. Um... Dynasty shingle. So go ahead and just working this in. I'm just fast forward and get through this quicker because there's absolutely no audio. I seal the shingles down out from the crimp seam just a little ways so any water has no way of getting off the flange. And then dry fit the shingle above it here in a minute behind it. Go ahead and throw that dry fit it, cut it, trim it, make sure it fits good, and then tuck it up under. We'll get to that here in a minute. I was just marking the height on how high to cut and then just do a quick trim, snap those out of there. Side note, Dynasty and uh, Sure Nail are hard to cut through. Makes a mess, but just do your best to trim them, make them look clean. Don't booger them all up. Again, I'll point out, it's, it's rather important to leave a little bit of a channel there for the water to run through and down. Um, if your other shingles are cut tight, if you have a point, I've talked about this before in valleys. You want to make sure you nip those at a 45. So get that shoved up under there. Then I reach under again, I believe, with the caulking. Seal under it. There we go. You don't want to nail any of those near that crimp seam either. You want to keep your nails back. Again, paying attention not to nail near a keyway. Not to double stack your keyways. Making sure you stack your keyways far enough over. I've heard people call it a book as well. So even 17 years into this, yeah, I still learn a little bit too. It's funny, I'll get comments on the channel. People are like, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You've not riffed that long. You don't know the terminology. I can tell you that the terminology changes different parts of the country or world from where you watch. Let me know down below, do you like the narrating kind? Do you like the this method? I, again, I apologize it happened. I just want to salvage this for you guys. Let's get those put in. There's another important part I want to point out here. All too often I come across a repair, primarily three tab, where I'm repairing it, and the repair would have held from the previous guy, because it was repair I'm repairing, if they would have sealed it down. So I'm pointing out right now, the new shingles have a good seal strip. Once they activate heat and seal down, they'd be fine. But the older row that you split apart, you probably got mat transfer or compromise the seal strip, they're never going to seal. So anywhere that has an old shingle you're butting up to or lapping under or tucking over, you want to make sure you seal those. So I'm pointing out the, the rain collar that's going to go on here, which I believe is what I'm getting ready to grab, that little guy right there. We're going to slide that down and then get the next piece of pipe on, the cap on, and then the straps. I'll show you that here in a minute. There's the supports, the straps. We will run up there real quick. That uh, tab slides through there till it pinches tightly around the pipe, and then you fold that tab over. I also use uh, zip screws to screw it together so it doesn't come undone. The uh, flashing collar there, I'm going to point out something too. I'll talk to you about here again in a minute. But go ahead and get this uh, rain collar on, is what I call it. It slips through that tab. You'll cinch it up tight around the pipe. Then you will... Uh, Fold it over. We always try to put a zip screw or a rivet through it too, just to make sure it's not going to come loose, move around. But I'll get that oriented and twist it around. What I was going to say about that flange, the flashing collar going up to the pipe, there's like four divots in it. I think i show again here in a minute. Um, looks like I got some GSO on my thumb. So yeah, folding that over, twist it around. But I believe I shoved the camera up under you can see those divots. I think there's two things, just using my common sense. There's less metal touching metal for thermal heat transfer, as well as, you can see them right there a little bit, when you've got heat radiating out from the pipe down below the roof line, it's going to go up and kind of have nowhere to go. So it does have little slits to vent through. I try to keep that collar up just a little bit. So here's the strap that the homeowner had to strap the pipe in, but I believe it was for a larger pipe. So keep that in mind. I thought those straps coming down to the left and the right would be out from about a 90 degree angle, but... 
it's not. The homeowner said, uh, just go ahead, let's modify this, and if he needs to get a new one, he will. So what I'm doing here is actually wrapping it around to kind of get the diameter, the circumference of the pipe, marking where the bend will go. That's going to be where it's cut. There's going to be a drill hole for the bolt to go through to grip the pipe. So I take it down to him. He modifies that. We chatted for a bit, and I come back up and get going again. So we'll see that here in a minute. Again, that's because it's the wrong diameter size. That's why it kind of bent over on the back side. It's kind of doesn't look that great. But when it's on, it actually ended up working out pretty good. So the strap behind me is already on. I forgot to turn the camera on. So I went down to go get the camera, hit record, and I show the second. So there's the strap on the pipe. Looking over the front, I didn't want it visible. So I went up as high as I could, but not high enough so they could see an eyesore strap from the front. Then on this side... Looking at the keyways there, it's you want to make sure you're in a truss, but not where a keyway is, because you don't want the water to come in and get in your screw holes. So find a truss. You can do that various ways. What I did once I found that one off camera, I measured over. They're on 16, so on a tape measure, if you look at the little red marks, every 16 inches they have, it's a good way of finding your framing stuff. So I found where the truss was over here, and I get it lined up in the same row, right at the bend, split that shingle free. Use a screw. I always try to get at least one screw into the truss. Since what I'm working on now. And then one nail so the bracket itself doesn't twist. Once I do that, I'll put some sealer under there, seal it up. And now those are, they're on tight. They're, it's not going to move with that screw into the truss. Way better than a couple nails. And then seal the shingle back down. I'll also point out those supports, the straps. One slides into the other, so they're you know, extendable, retractable. I put those in such a way that the smaller diameter shoves into the bigger one from below, just thinking if any rainwater, ice over the, the winter, colder months doesn't get in there as easy as it would be like that dripping from the bigger onto the smaller and down as opposed to in and under. Right there, you can kind of see it. Right there, I'm showing where the water runs down and off as opposed to under. Snug those up. I will say there were no lock washers on some of these, so I did put a small dab of uh, 4500 just to seal them. If you have clear, you probably want to use clear, but you're never going to see a little black dab from the ground. Double check everything, make sure they're all tight. Right there, you can see where I was adding it just so it doesn't uh, back out. Double check all these. Some of those had lock washers, some did not, so I just spot them. This was a 912 pitch, just working on there with cougar paws and a cushion. And for those of you safety freaks, my uh, transparent safety harness is on at all times. Cougar paws, seriously. Uh, you got to have a pair of cougar paws. They allow you to run around like a monkey up there. Disclaimer, use safety equipment. Like I said, I ain't your mama. Don't get hurt because I said, or don't monkey see, monkey do. Oh, I believe we're close to the end of this video here. So just double checking every last little nut and bolt, making sure everything is good, ready to wrap up. Here we go. I don't remember what all I said exactly word for word, but I just knew I needed to say I need to go around and clear GSL that because it's not done. Furthermore, there's people that commented about the uh, vet stack being crooked in that post I did. Check that out. It is straight, looks straight from all angles, including verified with a level. If you could smash the thumbs up button and I let make it turn blue, consider subscribing, ring the bell so you're notified when the next one drops. So let's face it, you know, like watching this for either your entertainment or for your how-to because you want to save money, so don't want to miss the next one. I hope you liked it. hope you liked the narration voiceover. Until next time, be safe. We'll see you then.